Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to have an introduction to the Laplace transform. Now if we have a function little f of t then we denote the Laplace transform of little f of t by this curly L and brackets of little f of t and essentially the Laplace transform is an integral transform so you can see here that you take your function little f of t multiply it by this exponential function and then integrate with respect to t over this half line. Now you can also see that t here is known as the dummy variable because it disappears as we're integrating with respect to t but the s doesn't disappear so this whole expression is actually a function of s. Now sometimes we denote the Laplace transform of little f of t by this big f of s so um, capital letters and lowercase letters um, in general denote respectively the Laplace transform and the original function. Okay, let's motivate the subject here. Why do we want to learn about the Laplace transform? Well, one of the main applications of Laplace transforms is involved in solving initial value problems. And these types of problems usually arise in modeling. And the big advantage that Laplace transforms offer over, for example, the methods that you learned in first year is that they streamline the process. For example, they can easily accommodate initial conditions into the calculations, and they can also easily deal with for example, discontinuous forcing functions. But this particular video is just going to illustrate how to calculate some basic Laplace transforms. So, so let's do that. Let's build our intuition. In part I, we're asked to use the above definition of the Laplace transform to calculate the Laplace transform of e to the minus 2t. So, in this example, we have little f of t is e to the minus 2t. So, if we look at our definition for the Laplace transform, we just replace little f of t with e to the minus 2t. Okay, so just replacing little f of t up here, we'll get this. Now notice that we have an, what's known as an improper integral here, so we have to be careful with the calculations here. Um, what I'm going to do is combine the exponents and then see if I can simplify. So. I'm going to write this expression in a limit form. So this is the standard way of evaluating these improper integrals. Okay, so now I'm going to imagine S is constant here and integrate normally with respect to T. And the very last thing will involve taking this limit as b goes to infinity. Okay, so if I integrate here, I'm going to get something like the following. Oops, t equals b. Okay, now you, you note that these substitutions do not involve s neither does the limit. So I can actually take the factor of 1 over s plus 2 out the front. Now that'll just simplify the calculations a little bit. Now if I substitute in t equals b then I'll get the following. And if I substitute in t equals 0, 
well, I'll get 0 up here, and a minus and a minus gives plus 1. So now what I would like to do is actually evaluate this limit. Now because s is strictly greater than minus 2, everything up here must be negative as b gets large and positive. So the limit of this first term is actually going to go to 0. And of course the limit of the second term is just 1. So you can see now that this is just 1 on s plus 2. And we're only concerned for s strictly greater than 2. OK, so that's the first part done. In part double i, we're asked to solve a more general problem here. If a is a constant, then conject about what the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t is. Well, you can see basically what we've done is the coefficient of t up here, we've changed the sign and it appears down here 1 on s plus 2. So let's conject about that the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t is just 1 on s plus a. Okay, in fact you can easily um, prove that, but I'm not going to repeat the proof. You might think, well, so what? Well, if a equals 0 in here, then we have the following. Okay, if a equals 0, we have e to the 0, which is 1, and just placing a equals 0 in here, we get this. So from this, we've just calculated the Laplace transform of 1. Now, notice that we didn't use any integration here whatsoever. We just used a known result to get the Laplace transform. And actually, in general, integration is not really used in calculating these Laplace transforms. It's basically standard practice to use a table of Laplace transforms. And this can save a lot of time and calculations. Now, to complement the Laplace transform, there's also an operator known as the inverse of the Laplace transform, and it's denoted this way. And roughly speaking, it undoes the Laplace transform and vice versa. So, for example, we know that the Laplace transform of e to the 3t, oh, sorry, e to the minus 3t, is just 1 on s plus 3. Now, if we apply the inverse Laplace transform to both sides, then we can get this result here. So just think of the inverse Laplace transform of, as undoing the Laplace transform and vice versa. Okay? Now, I've left you a few examples to do here.